welcome to the course module of communication engineering so in the last lecture we have already seen the introduction part of the communication and we have seen several topics uh, such as what are the messages signal what is the uh, basic components of any communication system basically it is electronic communication system and uh, uh, what is the baseband signal what is band pass signal okay and then we have seen uh, the communication channel okay in which i have already discussed about the guided or wired channel okay which is nothing but your man made media so in the today's lecture i am going to tell you about the unguided or wireless channel okay so uh, let's begin the discussion so as i said in the case of guided or wired channel i told you that these are the channels are actually uh, made by the uh, humans okay we are manufacturing such medias like twisted pair cable coaxial cable optical fiber cable and then we have to let down this uh, cables uh, onto ground and then uh, the uh, transfer of the signal could take place from one place to another place okay so why it is called as a guided media because this signals that we want to transmit that will be uh, actually traveling through this channel okay so wherever the channels are placed only that path it will be following okay so that's why it is called as the guided channel okay because it is guiding the signal it is showing the path to the signal uh, from transmitting from one end to another end but in case of the unguided or wireless channel okay in this cases generally a free propagation of signals are taking place okay so we do not have any man made media so we are using the earth's atmosphere okay so we have to use the earth's atmosphere for uh, transmission of the electromagnetic waves so in this case we have divided the wireless channel into three categories first one is called as the wireless broadcast channel second one is the mobile radio channel and the third one is the satellite channel so basically uh, more or less this uh, all are actually falls under the wireless channel but uh, there is a little bit differences between them for example if we talk about the wireless broadcast channel uh you can just see this picture okay in which what we have is we are having a certain artist who is performing a certain uh things okay at one end okay and that performance is being recorded by the camera for example we are recording the videos okay we are also nowadays we are watching the uh live cricket matches okay any another game live sessions okay any live uh, other programs we are seeing okay watching we are watching also news channels okay which are not which are nothing but your live telecast okay so generally what happens is these things will be recorded and then uh these will be transmitted through a particular transmitter so that transmitter is nothing but our uh antennas okay uh, one of uh, means there are several types of antennas but uh, we have to choose a particular antenna for transmitting the video signal or a particular antenna we have to take for transmission of the audio or voice signals okay so that type of antenna will be used and then this uh, antenna will be converting the uh, like uh, v and i waves which is voltage and current waves into electromagnetic waves okay so that uh, 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 transmission will be taking place through your wireless channel okay it is wireless channel wireless channel means it will be transmitted uh, through your antenna okay and that antenna will be radiating the electromagnetic waves and then this electromagnetic waves will freely propagated in a certain direction okay and then it will be uh, propagated through the our atmosphere and then it will be reaching to our uh, receiving antenna so generally in the case of wireless broadcast channel 
uh, if you talk about the television or if we talk about the radio so okay, radio means uh, you must heard of fm radio or am radio okay in this case you uh, must be aware that we are having a fixed uh, radiating antennas okay which is our fixed transmitters okay you might have seen a very big uh, transmitters are actually being placed at a certain radio stations or a television stations and uh, that's location doesn't changes okay it is not mobile in nature but it is a stationary and placed at a certain points and from there they are transmitting the video or audio signals okay and then this will be transmitted and then there may be a intermediate antenna may be available at a certain distances just to recollect the signals and then reamplifying it and again it will be sending to the another points so generally we are having a fixed antenna okay fixed transmitter antenna and obviously at the receiving end we are again having any receiving antenna which is also having its fixed position okay you know that at our homes uh, even if you go back some uh, 20 or 30 years back we had a certain antenna mounted in our home uh, that was having its fixed position and it is having a particular orientation of the antenna okay uh nowadays we are having like direct to home services again we are having a fixed antenna it is pointing towards the satellite okay so basically in the case of wireless broadcast channel we are having a fixed uh transmitter antenna and as well as we are also having a fixed receiver antenna okay both will be having more or less fixed position okay it is not moving now if we talk about the mobile radio channel you must think about our uh, mobile phones nowadays we are having mobile phones so uh, in the mobile phones you know that mm, there may be a chances that uh, the two persons who are talking to each other that that may be uh, means uh, uh, positions themselves in a stationary condition either they may be at a stationary condition they might be sitting at home and they might be talking to each other there may be a chances that one of the person is moving in a car or in a uh, like a, a train okay so one of them may be moving or it may be a possibility that um, possibility that both of the uh, person who are talking to each other are in moving condition so basically in the mobile radio channel what happens is uh, uh, um, there is a mobility in the transmitter antenna as well as in the receiver antenna that is possible in the case of mobile radio channels okay so uh, in the wired wireless broadcast channel what happens is as i said the antenna's position will be fixed okay it is not moving okay and uh, in the case of mobile radio channel okay uh, uh, one more point that you can understood in the case of wireless broadcast channel is uh, the antennas that we are using for transmitting or receiving is uh, having a sufficiently uh, large height okay it is having a sufficiently big height antennas okay it is not very small antennas if you see even if you are uh, the television uh, signals that we receive so television antennas are also having its certain height and its antenna plates that we are using it is also having a certain dimensions uh, which is very big in nature okay but if we talk about the mobile radio channel if you see we are not able to even see the antenna that is inside our mobile phone so basically its antenna size will be very small and obviously because of the small antenna size uh there is no uh, like uh, the transmitter and the receiver antennas cannot see each other this is one of the biggest thing that we have to understand okay in the case of wireless broadcast channel there may be a possibility that the transmitter antenna and the receiver antennas are able to see each other even if there is no possibility that if they are not able to see still uh, there is a diffraction mechanism of the electromagnetic wave uh, that will help the signal to reach to the receiver antenna 
where as in case of the mobile radio channels uh the generally the signals that is uh, coming to a receiver it will be uh not coming directly to the receiver but it may be uh, reflected from the big large buildings okay and a multiple uh, signals may arrive which is called as the multipath propagation so multiple signals may arrive at the single receiver and there will be a very complexity and it will be added very uh, in a, in a very complex manner and then the signal will be received so this is what uh, our mobile radio channel is and similarly we are having the satellite channel in the satellite channel as we know that we have to place a geosynchronous satellite okay we have to place a satellite in uh, in this space in geosynchronous orbit so in that case uh, uh the antenna uh, that we are placing at the ground uh, that will be pointing towards the satellite and the satellite uh, from the ground station if we look at uh, the satellite it looks uh, to be a stationary but actually it is moving and it is moving uh, and its uh, movement is actually synchronized with the uh, movement of the earth okay so uh, basically in the satellite channel if we are using the satellite communication then there is the biggest advantage of having the satellite communication is it is having a very large coverage area okay it is covering a large area and uh, it is obviously a line of sight communication we say so what we mean to say a line of sight communication that the transmitter antenna and the receiver antennas are able to see each other okay so that's why we are saying that it is a line of sight uh, communication or line of sight channel so these are the three different uh, unguided or wireless channels that we have and uh, you have to remember that in the atmosphere we are having the different layers okay like we are having the lower atmosphere we are having the middle atmosphere then we are having the uh, outer atmosphere okay so by using the different atmosphere uh, we can send a different set of frequencies okay because different uh, uh, layers of the atmosphere is actually supporting the different frequency components so that we have to understand that uh, in which particular uh, layer we are using for uh, communication purpose okay so here uh, you try to understand that in this two pictures uh, here in which uh there is a uh, communication between one person means between two person here you can see that uh, is taking place and here you can see that this particular program that may be a pre recorded program or maybe a live telecast okay it will be uh, transmitted through an antenna but in this case what happens is this uh, uh pre recorded session or a live session is actually transmitted by a single antenna and uh, there is a large number of receivers multiple receivers are receiving the same signals okay so whenever there is such situation where we are having just a single transmitter but a multiple receiver uh we are saying that it is a broadcasting is taking place okay we are saying it is a broadcasting which is taking place but whenever we are having a single transmitter and a single receiver okay uh then generally such communication is called as the point to point communication you remember that uh, in the case of uh, nowadays if you see the scenario uh in which we are connecting through the conference calls okay like uh, somebody is uh, calling uh, their friends uh, multiple friends can connect on the same conference call and we can have the like uh, multiple receivers or multiple transmitters okay so uh, how to distinguish whether it is a broadcasting or it is a point to point communication is uh in the today's scenario we can say that whenever there is a communication in which the multiple transmitter and multiple receivers are involved if it is a two way communication okay you just uh, try to understand here uh, this person can transmit the signal it can receive the signal and again this person can also send the signal and he can also receive the signal 
and that way there will be a bidirectional transmission of the signal that may take place okay uh, so similarly in case of the conference calls if we are having four members which are connected that the persons can uh, send the signals and they can receive the signals but in case of broadcasting specifically when we are having any radio station for example am or fm radio stations it will be transmitting the signal only in one direction okay and uh, other all receivers will be just receiving the signals so in communication uh, in this course mostly we are going to study about the broadcasting okay broadcasting situation so uh, somewhere you may be like when i will be discussing about the pulse code modulation that may also be used for the point to point communication okay so you have to understood what is point to point communication and what is broadcasting so i hope this must be clear so uh, now we have to move to our next topic which is very important one so in generally in communication you come across one of the term which is called as the modulation okay this is a very important topic okay modulation so we have to understood what is this modulation you please do not uh, bother much about the uh, the detailing of the satellite channels or wired uh, broadcast wired channel okay wireless broadcast channel or your mobile radio channels because uh, that part that detailing is not required at this moment okay first we have to build up the concept and then slowly we can go uh, deeper into the topics fine so now try to understand what is the modulation okay first you try to understand what is the modulation why this term comes and uh, what is the use of modulation that we have to understand so first you see the first definition uh, as per any book if you see you will find this definition of the modulation and here it goes like it is the process Uh, by which one of the properties okay one of the properties like amplitude frequency and phase of a carrier signal is varied in a systematic way with the amplitude of the message signal okay just you reread it again okay what we are saying it is a process by which one of the properties like amplitude frequency and phase one of the properties okay either amplitude or frequency or phase of a carrier signal is varied in a systematic way with the amplitude of the message signal okay so first of all uh, i have already explained you that uh, there are uh, lots of messages signal that we want to send message signals are nothing but the information bearing signals as i said it may be uh, the human voice signal okay uh it may be audio signals or it may be a video signals okay so these are the messages signal that we want to send okay so in this uh definition of the modulation in which we are studying about the uh, analog modulation at present okay so first of all we have come across like a carrier signal and a message signal okay so uh, as i said that any message signal if we talk about a voice signal okay then if i have a microphone and if i uh, speak something in the microphone and the corresponding uh, wave or the electrical pulses that will be generated by the microphone if we record it okay if we record it i will be going to get a certain time domain wave form okay we are going to record a certain time wave uh, time wave time domain uh, wave form okay uh, that wave form will be very random in nature okay that will look very random in nature if you see the actual speech uh, wave form okay so based on that amplitude of the message signal okay for the simplicity we are saying that here it is a carrier signal the message signal so you remember that uh, for the modulation Uh, when we talk about the modulation process we are talking about uh, the carrier signal so here the carrier signal we generally choosing uh, a very high frequency sinusoidal carrier wave okay we have to choose a very high frequency sinusoidal carrier 
So let us suppose that we are choosing a very high frequency sinusoidal carrier. And let us suppose for the simplicity, uh, just for the mathematical analysis, we are not uh, taking the voice signal or audio signal or any video signal, but rather for the simplicity, we are taking a sinusoidal masses signal. Okay, so let us say this is our sinusoidal masses signal. This is our masses signal. Okay, so our carrier is also sinusoidal and our message is also sinusoidal. Okay, so you must be wondering that how the carrier and the mass signal both are sinusoidal, how to distinguish them. The thing is that the carrier should be much, much larger than uh, your uh, mass signal in terms of frequency. Okay, its amplitude doesn't matter, but the frequency matters. Okay, so the carrier sinusoidal wave, uh, the sinusoidal carrier that we are choosing, it should have very high frequency as compared to our uh, modulating wave, you can say, or you can say your masses signal. Okay, so I will be representing the masses signal with MT and the carrier signal as the CT. Okay, so as we know that if we talk about any sinusoidal wave, then all the sinusoidal wave possess these three properties. One is its amplitude, okay, its amplitude, then its frequency, okay, its frequency, as you can say that in this carrier, the frequency is high as compared to this modulating signal, okay. This is having its low frequency, okay, because its period is large, time period is large, okay, and here the time period is very small, that reflects that the carrier is having its high frequency it's having high frequency. So as we know that any sinusoidal wave will possess the three properties, one is amplitude, another one is its uh, ca uh, carrier frequency, uh, its frequency, and the third one is its phase, okay? So these are the three properties by which we can define any sinusoidal wave. So as per the definition one, the modulation is nothing but changing one of the property of the carrier, either amplitude or frequency or phase with respect to the amplitude of the message signal. Okay, so let's say we are having this amplitude, this message signal we are having. So based on the amplitude, we have to change either the amplitude of this signal or frequency of this carrier signal or phase of this carrier signal. So here I have just shown the two, uh, uh, different modulation scheme and it's modulated wave after doing the modulation, okay? So uh, let's say if it is the amplitude modulated wave, here you can see that the carrier wave is getting modulated in a systematic manner based upon the amplitude of the, ampli uh, of the message signal. So here you can see that the amplitude is zero so when it is zero, the carrier wave will be unaffected. Okay? Its amplitude will be unaffected. But as soon as the amplitude is increasing, here you can see that the amplitude of the carrier wave is also increasing. Here you can see that its amplitude is increasing when the amplitude of the masses signal is increasing. Again, when it is decreasing, it starts decreasing, okay? So this way we can see that when it is again going negative, again, it is uh, going to be very small, okay? Its amplitude is very small. So we can see that based on the amplitude of our masses signal, the amplitude of the carrier signal is going to be decided, okay? And it is done very systematically. Similarly, so whenever the amplitude of the carrier, amplitude of the carrier is altered in a systematic way with respect to the amplitude of the masses signal, we are saying that it is amplitude modulated wave. Okay, we are saying it is amplitude modulated wave. Okay. Similarly, if the frequency component of the carrier wave is systematically varied with respect to the amplitude of the massive signal, then it is called as frequency modulated wave. So here you can see that uh, when the amplitude of the massive signal is zero, uh, the frequency of this carrier is remains same, it doesn't change. 
but as soon as this amplitude is increasing okay here you can see that the frequency of the carrier signal is also increasing okay it is increasing and again when it is uh, its amplitude is decreasing okay then at this point you can see it is having the minimum frequency it is having its minimum frequency so this wave is nothing but our frequency modulated wave so i hope from the definition at least uh, right now we are not discussing all the uh, mathematical part but i will be discussing it in more detail but first of all you have to try to understand what we mean to say the modulation and how it will be done that we have to see step by step in the mathematical expressions fine so basically in the definition one it says that it's uh, one of the property is of the carrier signal carrier signal is nothing but our high frequency sinusoidal carrier which will be varied in a systematic way with the amplitude of the masses signal the second definition of the modulation is as i already explained about the baseband signal and the band pass signal is it is the process by which the baseband message signal baseband message signal is translated into band pass signal for its efficient transmission this is another definition of the modulation it is the process by which the baseband message signal is translated into band pass signal for its efficient transmission so you please remember this definition number 2 at the at present i am not uh, explaining you how this phase band signal is converted into band pass signal okay uh, you already know the definition of the phase band message signal i told you that the phase band message signal is containing the uh, significant low frequency component and the band pass signal doesn't contains the significant low frequency component i will be uh, telling you how this base band message signal is converted into band pass message signal okay band pass signal okay so that i will be telling you by uh, with the help of mathematical expressions okay so now uh, you must be aware of this terms like carrier signal it is the high frequency signal most often it is a sinusoidal carrier that we are choosing uh, we also choose some pulses okay we can also choose the uh like a square wave or a certain pulse wave okay so that will be discussed when the topic comes okay so, uh, subsequently so mostly when we are talking about analog communication we talk about the sinusoidal carrier wave now message signal uh, as i said it is the information bearing signal or a baseband signal uh, such as a speech audio uh, or a video signal okay uh, now you have to try to understand this modulation process with the help of this block diagram okay so basically in the process of modulation okay when we talk about the modulation uh, we will be having a certain set of uh, uh, equipments okay or set of circuit you can say we are having a set of circuits in this circuit what will uh, be done is first of all we have to apply a message signal okay so another name of the message signal is also called as the modulating signal okay you will be come across this word which is called as modulating signal so in this modulator we have to apply the modulating signal we have to apply a sinusoidal carrier wave so this modulating signal will actually modulate the sinusoidal carrier wave okay it will modulate the sinusoidal carrier wave and then finally we are going to get a modulated wave as i can see i have the carrier we are having the modulating signal which is also the baseband signal so this baseband signal is going to modulate the carrier and then we are going to get the modulated wave okay so this is our modulated wave this is our modulated wave similarly uh, this modulated wave will be transmitted through the transmitter and then this will be uh, traveling through the channel as i said the channel could be a wired channel or a wireless channel so it will be transmitted through the channel and then it will be received by the receiver okay so channel output will be directly fed to the receiver there will be a demodulator okay whose function is to recover back the original message signal okay we have to recover back the message signal because we are intended to send the message okay so that recovery will be done by demodulator and then we have to recover back the our original message signal okay with acceptable quality 
so this is our basic block diagrams okay so but within this we are having a large number of steps okay we are having a certain circuits uh, that will be performing a certain specific mathematical task that we have to see so i hope what is the modulation you uh, a little bit idea you must have with this definition uh, and now we have to move further uh, what is the need of modulation sometimes uh, it is asked that what is the need why we uh, talking about the modulation okay so uh, you try to understand here that uh, uh, generally when we talk about the broad uh, cast situation in which we uh, need to uh, send the voltage or current waveform uh, into the wireless channel uh, by converting them into electromagnetic waves then we need an antenna okay we need an antenna okay so as we can see in the broadcast situation uh, in which we are using the wireless channel okay so for transmitting in the wireless channel we uh, need a particular antenna that will be uh, acting like a matching device uh, between your modulators uh, and uh, you can say uh, between your modulator and the channel okay so it will be converting the vi waves into electromagnetic waves so there is a constraint that how this antenna can efficiently radiate your uh, current voltage waveforms okay if we are having any current voltage waveforms which is traveling through this uh, wires okay then how this wires can be uh, means how this Uh, current or voltages can be efficiently converted into electromagnetic wave through this antenna so there is a constraint there is a particular rules that we need to understand so one of the very important parameter is the antenna height okay the physical dimension of the antenna okay so uh, it has been said that like if we want to transmit or radiate the signal efficiently then uh, the antenna height Uh, for efficient radiation uh, should be at least lambda by 10 okay for efficient transmission it should be lambda by 10 and in a height okay or a little bit more than that that, that can be uh, means uh, should it should be at least lambda by 10 or greater than lambda by 10 okay so that will be sufficient uh, for efficient transmission of the wave okay so Uh, if even if we choose like preferably, uh, preferably we have to choose lambda by four, but still if we keep it lambda by ten, then still it will be able to efficiently transmit it. So if you calculate the antenna height, okay, let us suppose if we want to calculate the antenna height, uh, then the antenna height can be calculated by having this formula H equals to C upon uh, lambda. Right. So here you can see that if we want to calculate the antenna height, okay, then this antenna height can be if if you take this uh, for efficient transmission, like uh, antenna height should be lambda by ten, uh, then this h will be equal to c upon ten f, okay, it will be ten uh, f. Fine. So if it is ten f. right if we are following this particular formula for calculating the antenna height uh, where c is the speed of light okay speed of light then try to understand from this equation itself if our antenna height is c upon 10f then if let us suppose if we want to transmit an audio signal okay uh, which is having this frequency component um, i i have already explained you that it is varying from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz then for efficient transmission you can see that if we want to efficiently transmit the lowest frequency component okay which is 20 hertz we have to just substitute f equals to 20 hertz okay so if you calculate this then the antenna height that will be able to efficiently transmit the 20 hertz frequency it will be having its height should be 1500 kilometers okay this is the minimum antenna height, height that we require okay similarly for transmitting the 20 kilohertz signal okay uh, for efficient transmission uh, this uh, uh, height will be equals to 
in 100 meters okay so obviously when we want to send this range of frequency the minimum antenna height will be uh, decided by the lowest frequency component it will not be decided by the uh, highest frequency component because we know that uh, we have to send the 20 hertz signal also so if 20 hertz signal uh, needs this much of antenna height 1500 kilometer then anything uh, height of the antenna which is greater than 1500 kilometer will be able to accommodate 20 kilohertz signal also okay so it will be able to handle both 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz frequency components so here you can see from this example that uh, because of directly transmitting the baseband signal as i said that audio signal is also a, uh, also called as or any message signal is also called as baseband signal because it is containing significant low frequency component then the antenna height that will be required for efficient transmission of the signal is very high you can see it is 1500 kilometer here it is 1500 meter but we have to keep it at least 1500 kilometer to accommodate entire frequency range so the antenna height is 1500 kilometer can take care of the entire audible range however the antenna height is not feasible okay you will see 1500 kilometer dimension of the antenna it is impractical to design we cannot design such antenna okay we cannot design such antenna so this is one of the biggest problem that you have to understand that the baseband signal cannot be transmitted directly because of antenna height which is not feasible okay it is not feasible because this baseband signals are containing the uh, significant low frequency component and the antenna height is actually decided by the lowest frequency component of the masses signal that we need to transmit or that we want to transmit so that you have to remember that the antenna height is not feasible and this is one of the biggest need of modulation to reduce the antenna height so let's see that when what are the different need of the modulation so first of all let us suppose if we have any signal that we want to transmit okay so generally what we do is we are choosing a very high frequency carrier okay please uh, here you do not bother about uh, how this spectrum comes okay and uh, uh, so what are the mathematics behind because i will be explaining it one by one so you please do not bother about it but just try to understand that let us suppose that the same signal if we are having any audio signal and uh, if uh, we want to transmit it using the modulation okay so for the modulation if we are using a high frequency sinusoidal carrier of 1 megahertz okay then its spectrum will get shifted okay its spectrum will get shifted and the baseband spectrum will be uh, means converted into the band pass spectrum okay you will find that i will explain you that that particular uh, signal uh, the baseband signal will be how it will be converted to the band pass signal so basically after doing the modulation you will find that the same signal that i explained you in the previous slide that uh, it is containing the frequency component from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz now the same signal will be containing this range 980 kilohertz to 1020 kilohertz okay so it will be converted to this particular range so now you can see that initially the audio signal was uh, containing the frequency from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and after modulation with the carrier uh, equals to 1 megahertz okay uh, the spectrum is actually shifted around 1 megahertz and its uh, minimum frequency is 980 kilohertz and the maximum is 1020 kilohertz please do not uh, bother about how it comes okay i will explain you later on so uh, when this is the case when it is 980 kilohertz to 1020 kilohertz you can see that the lowest frequency component is now 980 kilohertz so basically to design the antenna i said that it is the lowest frequency component which is going to decide the height of the antenna 
So the required antenna height, if you calculate, you will be getting uh, from this formula h equals to c upon 10 f, then you will be finding that this height of the antenna or the physical dimension of the antenna is 30.6 meters. So you can understand that previously it was 1500 kilometer and now it is becoming 30.6 meters, okay? So now obviously this 30.6 meter is much, much realizable, okay? It can be realized. We can make such antenna whose dimension is of 30.6 meter. Rather than designing an antenna whose uh, physical dimension is 1500 kilometer. So obviously this modulation is going to reduce the antenna height it is going to reduce the antenna height because it is converting the baseband signal into the bandpass signal. One more important uh, point that we need to uh, understand here is when we are talking about uh, audio signal whose frequency component is varying from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So when you calculate the maximum frequency to minimum frequency range, okay, uh, maximum frequency component to uh, minimum frequency component ratio, you will get 20 kilohertz divided by 20. So 2020 will be canceled out and you will be getting the ratio equals to 1000. Okay. But when we convert the baseband signal into band pass signal, okay, here you can see that the maximum frequency component is uh, 1020 and the minimum is 980 kilohertz. Still, you can see the bandwidth is of how much it is 40, okay, 40 kilohertz, fine. So in this case, if you calculate the uh, maximum frequency component to the minimum frequency component ratio, you will find that this ratio is near about one, okay, it is near about one. It is just little bit greater than one, but it is near about unity. So basically when we are having this uh, property in any signal in which uh, the highest frequency component to the minimum frequency component ratio is near about unity. Uh, this is called as narrow bending signal. Okay, it is called as the narrow bending process. You will find this terminology in the books like it is narrow bending is taking place. So basically what we are doing is we are converting the baseband signal to a bandpass signal in which this conversion of the uh, baseband signal into bandpass signal makes the bandpass signal or convert the bandpass signal uh, into a narrow band signal. Okay, so basically this process is called as narrow bending. Okay, narrow bending in which this ratio is near about one. So basically, narrow bending of the signal makes the antenna height visible. That you remember. Okay, initially that the ratio was thousand, but now this ratio is near about unit. So uh, we can design an antenna even even for one megahertz. Even if we design, it will be able to capable to uh, handle all the frequency components. Okay, so narrow bending will take place, and due to the narrow bending, this height of the antenna will become visible. So that is one of the very important thing that we have to understand. So there are certain other advantages of uh, need of modulation. Okay, why we do the uh, modulation. So one more uh, modulation is uh, need of modulation is the efficient transmission. Okay, in the previous uh, lecture, I told you that uh, every uh, channels, as I said that whether it is a wired channel or it is a wireless channel, okay, all the channels will have their own pass band. You remember that own pass band, okay? So what we mean to say that it is having its own pass band. The pass band means it is the range of frequency in which uh, the channel will efficiently transmit the signal without attenuating it. Okay, it will not attenuate the signal. Okay, as we know that the filter characteristics, if you see the filter characteristics, okay, basically we are having three, four uh, different filter characteristics. One is the low pass filter characteristics. We are having uh, high pass frequency characteristics or we are having the band pass frequency characteristics or rather we are also having the uh, band rejector, okay, band reject filters. So 
basically we are having total four frequency uh, frequency characteristics okay so what i want to say is that any channel okay any channel most of the channel you will find that it is of band pass characteristics okay there are certain channels that will be offering you like a low pass it will means uh, its a frequency spectrum uh, will be like a low pass filtering okay so what happens is uh, uh, like if you uh, see the transmission of the electromagnetic wave through the ground wave propagation okay from the lower atmosphere so what happens is it can transmit the signal easily up to 2 megahertz okay up to 2 megahertz it will not attenuate the signal much okay and the signal can be transmitted easily but if you want to further increase the frequency okay this uh, lower atmosphere cannot support okay the lower atmosphere cannot support similarly ionospheric propagation is actually possible as i said that in the atmosphere we are having the different layers okay so similarly we are having the lower atmosphere we are having the upper atmosphere so when we are having ionospheric propagation when it is reflected from the ionosphere uh, then the frequency range that the ionosphere can support is from 2 megahertz to 30 megahertz so you remember that within this 2 megahertz to 30 megahertz uh, it will be efficiently transmitting the signal without much attenuation okay without much attenuation if you reduce the frequency uh, lower than the 2 megahertz or if you increase the frequency greater than the 30 megahertz there will be much attenuation uh, that you will be encountered if you are using the anospheric propagation so similarly line of sight propagation is possible beyond 30 megahertz and the satellite communication is taking place from 3 to 6 gigahertz so basically what we have to understand uh, from the slide is uh any channel okay any channel whether it is a wired channel or it is a wireless channel we have to understand that all the channels are having its own pass band okay so if you send the signal okay if you send the signal within the pass band then only that channel will not attenuate it and it will be allowing it to pass through but if you go beyond its pass band that channel will not support the signal and it will attenuate it okay and you will not be able to transmit the signal so this is one of the very important thing we have to understand so modulation what it does is basically modulation will be done by keeping in mind which particular channel we want to use for transmission of the signal okay for our modulated wave which particular channel we want to use okay and what will be the uh, pass band of that particular channel okay so accordingly we have to perform the modulation we have to accordingly choose the carrier frequency accordingly we have to choose the modulation scheme and then we have to shift the spectrum of our base band signal into the uh, pass band of the channel okay pass band of the channel so that the signal can be transmitted efficiently so these are the very important points that we need to understand at this moment only this two point i am going to explain uh, and the other three points like modulation for multiplexing modulation for frequency assignment modulation to improve the signal to noise ratio these three points i will be explaining uh, once i will be covering certain topics okay what is multiplexing what is frequency assignments uh, that i will be covering later on so uh, today i will stop here i hope uh, the lecture you must have understood if you found any difficulty any queries okay you let me know your doubts by dropping the message into the comment box so thank you for watching i will be coming up with the next lecture thank you